but apparently Clint wanted to do it word for word because he believed so much in what this was. And I think that's very telling of Clint Eastwood as a person, his values. So, Gran Torino, Clint Eastwood, big car movie, but more than just a movie centered around a car, in a sense, it wasn't a car movie because it wasn't about driving and it wasn't specifically about cars. The car was a symbol for something bigger. And I want to talk about that because it's rather important. But before that, I want to tell you the story that led me to actually do this. So in the past number of years, I've uh, connected with a lot of different videographers, filmmakers, people who maybe were doing an interview, maybe were creating a short film, something like that relating to Genius Garage. In relatively recent times, spent a very long time with a videographer filmmaker type person and of course they were very positive on genius garage want to promote that in a positive way and uh, go from there but the thing that uh, made me sad that i came to realize these people who really embody the california west coast culture or at least seem that way but when it all came down to it in the end they just wanted to try to get me to sign a big old contract to just give my life and genius garage totally away and give them full power over everything which hey can't blame some people for trying, but when I very nicely said, uh, hey, why don't we, uh, you know, make this be a little more even killed for all of us to move together as a team, they just got all mad and vanished with all of our week's worth of video, which uh, is really lame, <laughs> okay? Basically, I feel rather cheated, and uh, we were supposed to have gotten video and whatnot, but we didn't. We just lost weeks of work for people who now have our likeness and everything and are going to do whatever the heck they want with it. But the thing about Clint Eastwood is this, they, for whatever reason in the conversations we have, don't like Clint Eastwood. Don't know why, I just remember them talking smack about the guy. And, uh, and then it hit me after the experience I had with these individuals, I'm like, hmm, maybe I should look further into this. So I did. Now the movie Gran Torino, I haven't watched in a long time since it came out. Uh, when it came out, I remember thinking this is a very good movie. Uh, it deals with a lot of important life topics, and uh, it's very relatable, uh, and quite frankly, kicked me so hard in the feels that I didn't really want to watch it for a while again, just because, you know, you know those movies that I'm talking about, they really get you, so <laughs> you bring them out every so often. So I watched it again today, and uh, Clint Eastwood's character is a Korean War veteran. Uh, he's got his Gran Torino from when he was working on the assembly line back in the early 70s, brand new, and has kept it perfect, maintained a long time. Uh, he's a character who lives alone. Uh, the movie starts off with his wife just died. Uh, I think they were married probably 50 plus years in this movie. You know, and Clint's character is feeling alone and isolated from everybody. Uh, you see very quickly that his grandkids do not embody his core values. Uh, they don't take the funeral seriously, they don't take the church seriously, and they're certainly not showing any respect to the setting with everybody or Clint. So that's really setting the stage. Clint Eastwood's character, uh, you know, you see other symbolic things in there. The Gran Torino representing his pride in uh, industry, his pride in his job, his pride in his nation. Same thing, he still has his M1 Grand Rifle, which any firearm aficionados uh, know from World War II and the Korean War. is kind of like the most classic American rifle, just Lots of power, really good things. So kind of symbolic too on what things meant. But as the film progresses, you see the full nature of Clint's character's isolation as an older guy. One, uh, he's kept up his house beautifully, inside, out, and the grounds over time. But as you all see the nature, the ebb and flow of uh, cities, what once was a very nice neighborhood eventually kind of falls down and becomes a not so nice neighborhood and things aren't kept up and maybe the income of families and, and uh, the cultures around it aren't so good. And it's the same with Clint's house. So the Clint character's house, really nice. The neighbors, a little more in disrepair, yards are grown up. And I believe this is set in Detroit. So you can understand that. So you can see the feeling of isolation going. When everybody from the family are over his house, no one's helping him, just get simple chairs. They're not really thinking about everybody else. And uh, you can see that his kids, his boys, and most especially his grandchildren, just don't share his values of life, people, teamwork, community, or even taking pride in a domestic car and caring about that. Uh, and they don't get it. They don't get him. Uh, the wife is a little bit um, 
what do you call it, sympathetic toward Clint's character because he worked at the Ford plant, but that was really superficial. Uh, of course, the family goes on a little bit later. You get some really unhappy, unnice, unappreciative things, such as the granddaughter who's, you know, got nose rings and things like this. Uh, she basically just looks at Clint's character and wants all his stuff when he dies. Doesn't care at all. I mean, absolutely self-centered in, in titleism shown that. And that's sad because that's obviously his family lineage. So after the family goes away and then comes back on his birthday trying to put him into a nursing home and his character clearly doesn't need it. Uh, and if any of you out there have had experiences with uh, older people, the United States is a very funny place that doesn't get aging. Just the United States hasn't been real respectful of people that are aging and keeping me at home and whatnot. So it just, uh, it just goes to cement Clint's character's feeling of isolation and his values, whatever they may be, just not showing anything. We don't know him. But when the movie starts to take a turn was when the neighbor kid, if I'm not mistaken, was a different uh, segment of Chinese culture and immigrants there. You see a number of things happen. One, there's, there's gangs going on that are trying to get this young man into the gang. And his initiation is he's supposed to steal Clint's Grand Torino car. Of course, it fails. Clint meets him with an M1 Grand. Something happened. He falls over. The kid gets away. But he catches him. And it goes from there. There's also a... Um, a big family meeting of the uh, immigrant family next door that Clint ends up being at. And that's when you see a turning point. That's when you start to see the Clint character's values come out because he's seeing these people and while he doesn't relate to them, and quite frankly, he's a bitter old guy that fought in a war over in the general vicinity of the world he's at with you know, racial slurs and everything else going on. And he's very crusty. He starts to see the immigrant family showing core family values and caring about each other, traditions, of uh, food and meals and caring for each other and all that. Um, and you know, he makes some faux pas. He, acts, he touches the uh, young kid's head, uh, which is <laughs> very frowned upon and all that. But you start to see a small realization. And then the, uh, the mother and the sister uh, take the young boy who tried to steal his car and basically force him to repay his debt for doing that by working for the Clint character. He doesn't want to do it, of course but the family insists the women uh, are standing up for their core values and force the kid into it. And Clint's like, well, okay, what, you know, stick him with me, whatever. Uh, but I think that was a moment where he started to respect them for having the values. And um, I think some of you have seen this movie, of course, but the, it, it continues. You know, it continues. He's really down low, uh, the young man in Clint's eyes but he's working, he's there, starts to pay attention. And you start to see that even though Clint's character is very gruff and difficult, he actually cares and starts smack talking with the kid and kind of like being very blunt, very direct. He meets uh, this uh, young woman who's very attractive downstairs, talks to him in, in the family's house. And then after she and these other guys leaves, like, what are you doing, dummy? She likes you, you're missing out. Go after her, idiot. <laughs> So the guy cares. The guy cares about young people and he's starting to care about values. And I'm not going to go into every detail, but you see the progression all the way through. And he takes this young man to help him find a job at a construction place. Teaches him how to talk, how to think, how to respect others, how to smack talk with guys, how to be accepted. Takes him to the hardware store, helps him get tools, says he can pay him back to get him started with that job. You know, these are the everything, everything you want from a mentor and everything you want from an older person to pass on to a generation with his secession planning just as of life. Uh, you know, he takes him to the barbershop. That's a great fun story about uh, smack talking with guys and whatnot. But the, uh, the gangs persist in this that are trying to get the young man. Um, they beat him up. They take his tools when Clint's trying to get him off on the right path to work and have a job and build confidence and basically help him become a, a great man in the future with good values and uh, take that away. Uh, Clint's character does not care. Nobody cares about him. So he's going to go take care of it because he darn well knows nobody else is. Uh, so he uh, beats up the one guy, sticks a gun in his face, intimidates him, which in his day probably would have worked, but didn't in this circumstance, which made the gang violence way worse. It's a drive-by shooting. And um, the, uh, by the way, if you don't want this to be spoiled, don't keep watching. Just watch the movie and then come back to it. Uh, and then the young woman who's, Tao, I believe is his name, the young boy's sister, gets raped. Or at least it's very clearly shown. And Clint's character is just just like, that's it. Absolutely appalled. There's, there can be no civilization here. But throughout all of this, the immigrant family and Clint's character get to know each other better. They care about him. He cares about them. 
he sees the core values and, and everything wonderful going on. And that's also an important thing about this movie where somebody who is considered basically an old white guy in America that they might just say, oh, he's got racial, sl racial slurs. He's a jerk. He doesn't care about anybody. Cares about people that are different from his own and coming to realization and understand and care about them because they are people, because they're now Americans and they're all part of a community together. So that's a really touching and special moment that people can change for the better as long as they possess good core values. Of course, to the end of the movie, the gang violence is worse and worse and worse. And uh, there's also the very young pastor or priest, I think it's a uh, Catholic priest. Clint's character does not respect this guy who thinks he's going to tell Clint about life and the world and everything else like that. He's, you know, a young kid. This is a priest. What does he know? <laughs> Clint's been around the world, the world and been to war and had a family and raised everything like that. It's, uh, it's a special kind of relationship throughout that movie and just coming to understand Clint's character, coming to understand that and that he does care. Uh, and Clint hatches the plot at the end that he, um, there's no way to make this better. Nobody appreciates him except these people. He's passed on his care, he's passed on his core values, his drives, workmanship, and you know, caring about a community to this young man and the immigrant family he's part of and being part of a community there. And I think the turning point of this movie or the, the special moment was when Clint's character walks over next door and asks him for help getting a big refrigerator out of the basement. And Clint said, I'll take the heavy side, that's the top, you push from the bottom. And the kid says, no way, you want help, old man? You brought me over here. I got the top, otherwise you I'm going home. And Clint put, puts up a fight, but that's the moment where the young boy effectively becomes a man. And Clint reluctantly let him, lets him do it, and effectively that was succession, that was succession planning. That was the moment when it took the turning point and that young man became, the young boy became a man, so to speak. So it, it really meant a lot. And as, as you may know, in the end of this movie, uh, Clint's hatching a plot. Um, they realize that there's no way to stop this gang unless basically you kill them. They're horrible, they're ruining the community, they're raping people, they're destroying anything anybody wants to build, build for something better, for community, for civilization, for the future. Uh, they're destroying young men and you know, there's no police and nothing that can be done. So we, we all think that Clint's character is gonna go shoot him, maybe get revenge with this young boy. When in fact, at the end, it's kind of a ruse and he locks the kid in the basement and says, uh, and you think Clint's character is gonna go kill him and he doesn't want him to be part of it. He doesn't want him to have blood on his hands. He doesn't want him to see what Clint's character saw in war. And as you may know, Clint's character goes, confronts, does a number of things to make peace with himself, make peace with the world and what he's done and having passed it on. Uh, and he goes to the house where these gang members are, is out in the front where the neighbors can all see it. They all come to the front. Of course, they're all carrying guns. Clint's character does that kind of crazy psych out thing where he just <laughs> freak him out. Because Clint's character takes no crap and has already messed with him and beat him up. So already the gang has something to prove. They want to do something about it. So he's smoking a cigarette and getting a light. And uh, he reaches into his jacket and quickly pulls out the lighter. So they think he's going to draw on it. They already have handguns. And they just light him up. And that's it. Clint's character's done. He was unarmed. And he knew that, he, that he'd go out there and they would put him in a position that they would kill him. And that the neighbors and everybody would see it. So there's witnesses. So... That is how Clint put the gang away. The thing about that scene that's so important is not that Clint's character was just a martyr and helped put these uh, people away, this gang member, but it's how he did it and why and how much it meant to him. Because frankly, the easiest thing for Clint's character to do was just go kill all the gang members and he's old, he doesn't care anymore, so they can put him away and it would have gotten rid of him. But Clint's character, and this is something I don't know if everybody's get, Clint's character valued so much his nation and the nature of law and due process and all. And he knew that the chess pieces were such that the only way it could be done was with he sacrificed himself as an individual for everybody else. And I think that's a very important matter to bring up, that even if you want to or can take care of something, you still have to respect our law and our legal process and our nation and police and all of that. And the difficult thing about the gang is, or anybody that's horrific out there, they know how to exploit that. So that was another profound reason why Clint's character had, frankly, done the right thing for the betterment of the people. They're sharing his core values, his community, the young man, the immigrant family. You know, at the end of the movie, you see that, and this comes full circle to where they're all with the attorney and reading the will, donates the house to the church, 
because uh, obviously value there, but he gives his car and probably his tools and everything like that and his caretaking of his dog to the young immigrant man who's riding away at the end. And symbolically, of course, driving away in the Grand Trina, which is perfect, embodies Clint Eastwood's character's values and core values and who he is as a man. And uh, obviously him driving along and away at the end is symbolic of carrying those forward for the future. I think this movie is incredibly important. And for modern times and the United States just embodies everything good about an American and older generations and core values. I think it embodies uh, acceptance and bringing new people and new immigrants trying to find a way and adopting and finding great core values in the United States for the future. But it also deals with issues we're having right now where people don't understand they're not respecting the past or elders or great core values and they're not working for that and they're becoming highly superficial and disconnected from people even through social media and such. So that movie, even though it come out, came out a number of years ago, is insanely relevant and deeply, profoundly meaningful. Uh, it did well in the box office. I think it was like $300 mil or $30 million the first uh, weekend or whatnot. And by all intents and purposes, it wasn't a huge blockbuster movie. And frankly, it's not going to be because America's all about superheroes right now and watching fight scenes the last 30 minutes that I get bored of. The dummy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But to wrap this up, and Clint Eastwood's character, and Clint Eastwood, and from the little I know about actors and producers and things like that, is one, you know, Clint Eastwood's a real guy. And um, he, apparently the writer of this, um, of this uh, screenplay for Gran Torino, the only, the only thing Clint changed was the location. I think originally it was gonna be in Minnesota, and they moved it to Detroit. But apparently Clint wanted to do it word for word because he believed so much in what this was. And I think that's very telling of Clint Eastwood as a person, his values and his core values and what things mean to him. So to those people in California that I met that talk smack about him and frankly kind of screwed me over <laughs> in Genius Garage, it leads me to the realization that those out there in the world who will be leaders and adopt worthwhile core values to try to create something better for the future are generally always try to be torn down. And the individuals that tear them down are con artists, idiots, cheap, drug addicts, etc. People that don't have those core values. They're not building and just want to tear it down. So I guess where I'm going with this is I just wanted to say it because some people who I thought were worthwhile that ended up not being talked crap about somebody who really put himself out there, that's Clint Eastwood, to make an incredible film that I think matters for um, our country and our people and core values and the future and our relations with immigrants and other people around the world. So for that, hey man, I don't know whatever it's worth, I would work with Clint Eastwood or hang out with him any day of the week. I sure as heck wouldn't work with those other people because um, values are everything and passing it down. So I guess, thanks Clint, <laughs> meaningful movie and uh, probably took a lot for you to do that. But um, that's really it guys. I hope you watch it. I hope when you watch the movie, you get something out of it and it inspires you to make the future better. Uh, you know, the scenes of Clint mentoring the young man and taking him to the, uh, the hardware store to get tools and whatnot reminds me of exactly what I do here at Genius Garage. And I can think of times that I've taken the students to go get tools or to go get art supplies um, and help them <laughs> carry forward one day. Who knows? Maybe I'll weld my Viper to <laughs> some young person and hopefully it'll be symbolic of core values too. But anyway, Clint Eastwood, I like your style. I hope you guys will like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.